Good morning, Paul. Afternoon, whatever, excuse me, <clears throat> whatever time of day. Welcome to this morning's family service. And I hope you can stay with us for this hour as we just set in, finishing the setting up here. There we go. Right. And uh, as you can see, I have a new background a lion. <laughs> this is a, a wee lion cub. Yes. And we're going to think a bit about lions today, just a little bit. Um, it's nice. One of the names of the Lord Jesus is he is the lion of Judah. Sometimes they meaning he is the praise. He is the strength. Because a lion, as we know, is the king of the jungle. <laughs> yes, the lion. Sorry. Yes, he is. He's the lion. And um, we'll have a look maybe at that song later on. But also, we're going to have a look at Mickey. And who once pretended to be a lion. I'm sure you're going to enjoy that story if you've never heard that story before. It's one of Mickey's favourite stories. Well, in one sense it is, because he was being a bit silly, weren't you, Mickey? Yes, oh, hi, everybody. Hi. Oh, is anybody looking? Um, I don't know, Mickey, because I never, I, I never put on the Facebook that we're on today. Oh, well, if you're not there. So, but if you are there, welcome. Yes. I hope you like my story today. Yes, Mickey. I know that story. And uh, also, who do we think of in the Bible? Do you remember this? In the Bible, there's a famous man we think about who met. A lion. Well, in fact, I can think of two, three. Yes, maybe you've got the one who we'll look at in a minute. But can you think of somebody else who met a lion, who became stronger than a lion? Wow. And he had honey from a lion. One day, we haven't done his story yet. We'll maybe do his story because it's really interesting. Who is that? Put the answer on the timeline, see if we can get it. Who was a man who ate honey from a lion? And then it was actually a man of God who uh, was killed by a lion. Aha, now that may take confuse your name on that one. But um, these are interesting stories in the Bible. There's so many interesting things in the Bible. Well, before we unwrap and have a look and see some of the things that are there today, Let's first of all talk to the one who has caused the Bible to become life to us. And that is the Lord Jesus. And by his Holy Spirit, he still inspires us. He helps us. His spirit comes within us to help us to understand his love, his kindness. Oh, and all the wonderful things that he has planned for us. That's how, why we look to the Lord Jesus and we ask him for more of the Holy Spirit. So let's do that this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you're with us. You never leave us. And yes, and also we thank you for the plan you have for our lives. And you thank us. Thank you that you want us to be bold and to be strong because you are with us. So we ask you to help us today as we hear these stories and as we get to know more about you, Holy Spirit, fill us, we pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. You did my verse for me today. Yes, I know I did, Mick. I can't help it sometimes. I sometimes speak what you speak. And I speak what you speak. Well, that is so right. That's it. And, uh, and you know, that's how it is with the Lord Jesus. Sometimes he speaks what we want and we can speak what he wants as we look to him. So let's go and have our song first of all. Let's do one we've not done a well. This is a wake up song. And uh, let's just do this. Uh, and then we'll get going a bit more. But it's a wake up song. It's a good one. And here's the question. Is God dead? And what do we say? No. Is God dead? No. And we go. No, 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 God's not dead. No, he is alive. 
He is alive, God's not dead. No, he is alive, praise him with all of me. I will praise him with my hands, praise him with my feet, praise him in the church, I'll praise him in the street, I'll praise him in the air, I'll praise him everywhere. I'll praise him with all of me. No, 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 God's not dead. No, he is alive, God's not dead. No, he is alive, God's not dead. No, he is alive, praise him with all of me. I will praise him with my hands, praise him with my feet, praise him in the church. I'll praise him in the street. I'll praise him in the air. I'll praise him everywhere. I'll praise him with all of me. No, 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 no. God's not dead. No, he is alive. God's not dead. No, he is alive. God's not dead. No, he is alive. Praise him with all of me. And so let's just move on to the person we're thinking about. Maybe you've already guessed who it is. And yes, it is Daniel. Dare to be a Daniel. We'll have our wee lion cub within this. Um, so Daniel was the one who went to the lion's den because he refused to stop praying and he disobeyed the order of the king even though the king loved Daniel but the law had been made and Daniel uh, and the uh, law was well it was a wrong law it was a bad law and when bad laws are there sometimes the bible tells us we need to obey God rather than men and so Daniel he refused to stop praying and indeed today we sometimes tell us people say don't pray don't pray you mustn't pray you mustn't pray in the street in fact there was a lady and because she was praying silently in the street she was taken to well she was arrested wow that happened this last week where the court said uh, no it's okay it's okay so that was a bit of a relief but still people are saying to us we shouldn't pray. So important to pray. And that's why the story of Daniel is so important. Yes. Ah, ah, oh, ah, I hope you'll pray. Oops. <laughs> we saw. Yes. I think the lion. He wants us to pray. Yes. Okay. Let's do the song. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose for man, dare to make it known. Standing by a purpose true, heeding God's command. Honour them, the faithful few, all hail to Daniel's band. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose for a man, dare to make it known. Many mighty men are lost, daring not to stand. Who for God had been a host by joining Daniel's band. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose for man, dare to make it known. Many giants, great and tall, stalking through the land, head on to the earth would fall if met by Daniel's band. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose for man, dare to make it known. Hold the gospel banner high, on to victory grand. Satan and his host defy and shout for Daniel's band. 
that be a Daniel that to stand alone, there to have a purpose for there to make it known. Yes, okay, last chorus, last one time. There to be a Daniel, there to stand alone. There to have a purpose for man, there to make it known. Yes. Well, I wonder, then you tell somebody about Jesus if you're a Christian. Have you told somebody about Jesus this week, this month, this year? Oh, there's a question. Do you think God wants you to tell somebody about Jesus? Well, if that's the case, if that's the case, why haven't you done it? Um, so it's, uh, it's good to have the courage and to ask God for the courage to tell somebody about Jesus. Or as we're just going to look at this story just for a moment. Um, it's a story which I love because it's over. It's about one of the greatest missionaries who ever lived and you can see the picture here it's on my screen i hope yes and it's about a person called hudson taylor my, as you can see my video is freezing up every now and again but um so here is the story of hudson or taylor or some of the story of Hudson Taylor. Hudson Taylor, as you, this is a picture here. He was, uh, well, when he was very young, in fact, let me tell you about him. In this picture here, we see his sitting at the table, having a meal with his mum and dad, and his dad was talking about people in a faraway land. And this was, well, it was, uh, how would it be? The year would be 1837, I think that's the year, 1837, which is, well, 200 years ago. Sounds long, but it's not all that long. And in those days, people were just starting to go and investigate other countries. And one of the countries they'd heard about was a country called China. And he knew there were thousands, even millions of people in China and they had never heard about Jesus. And uh, Taylor's mom, Hudson's mom and dad, and the sister Amelia there, they were talking about China and talking about missionaries, how they should be able to go. And they wanted more people to go. And as Hudson, five years old, listened to this story, he says, oh, dad, dad, I'll go to China, I'll go to China, I will go and tell them about Jesus. Because Hudson, even though he was quite young, he had also come to know the Lord Jesus as, as his savior. But then mom and dad, they looked at each other and they smiled because they had asked God before Hudson was born and they had prayed for a child who would go to China. But when Hudson was born and as he was growing up, now he was five, he had been quite ill. He was small and sickly and so much so that he was not able to go to school. He had to uh, be taught at home and he was often so sick. And in fact, he never got to school till he was 11 years old. And so the mother and dad thought, well, God must have another plan. And they didn't see what we would call the potential. God, he did, they didn't see what God can do for someone whose heart is towards him. So Hudson there was saying, yes, when I'm a man, I'll be a missionary. But so his mum and dad, they taught him. They started going to school when he was 11. And they taught him many things, maths, you know, a language called Latin and uh, reading, of course, and he loved to read. And this is a little story I want to highlight today. Hudson, he did love to read, even though he was quite young. And sometimes he would read aloud to his mum while she sat in a rocking chair, 
mending and sewing things. And once he was reading such an interesting book, he didn't want to stop. And he thought, if only I could read in bed. But mom always takes the lamp away with her when she says good night. Now, the lamp in those days was a candle. So because I have no electricity as we have today. So they used to have a candle and a lamp. And he thought, well, when mom says good night, she uh, takes the lamp away. But what I will do is I will get some candle ends, like small candles. You may have seen them. And what he did, I'll put some candles in my pocket. And so when mom has got left me in bed, I'll light them one by one and read my book. Well, in the evening, a visitor came. And the visitor, uh, when the visitor came, Hudson had his chance. He tiptoed to the place where his mom kept the candles. Quickly, he stuffed several of the ends into his biggest pocket. Then he went into the living room to say good night. But the friendly gentleman Cut Sam, come here then, give us a cuddle. And he sat him on his knee. Well, Hudson didn't want to do that, but he knew it would have been very impolite. So Hudson was sat on the man's knee right next to the fire. And what happened? The candles in his pocket became very warm. In fact, they got very warm and Hudson was thinking because it was getting very hot the side of his leg. And then he thought, oh, no, they're going to melt in my pocket. Well, eventually the man says, OK, then, Hudson, goodbye. And Hudson went to his bed. Well, when he was getting there, his mum came up and his mum came and she saw him standing in the middle of the room with a pocket full of greasy candles. And it was a terrible mess. Of course, it was all sticking to his trousers and everywhere. And when his mum came and she said, Hudson, what have you done? Hudson was very ashamed because he had tried to deceive her. And he began to cry because he could see how disappointed his mother was This. Was, was so sad that he had tried to deceive her, that he could do this. And his mother was very, very, very upset because he had let her down. And she was so sad that Hudson could do that. Of course, he, she, he was forgiven, but he never, ever forgot that. Well, Hudson, as he grew up, just like everybody else, he, uh, he liked to enjoy playing and, and he started working a bit as well. And he went to help his father, who worked in a, like a, a pharmacy and a chemist. And his dad let him read his books and everything. And Hudson enjoyed what he was doing, but he wasn't happy. The thing was, he had stopped reading his Bible like he used to do. And when his dad read the Bible in the morning, which they used to do, he didn't feel like praying. In fact, he began to think, well, I want to get a horse. I want to get a house. I want to. There was many things that he was thinking about what he wanted to do. And it wasn't serving God. It wasn't learning about Jesus anymore. And he was dreaming about other things. And so it was quite sad. And his mother and father and his sister were really concerned about Amelia. Uh, his sister Amelia was really concerned about Hudson. And then one day, this is what happened. He was being bored. And as he was bored, he'd wandered into where all the, the chickens were and the hens, and he was just looking around. And as he looked around, he came across, oh, what's that? He was very curious. He looked around, he thought, oh, what is that? And as he came across, it was a bit of paper, and it was, we would call this today, a tract. It was a leaflet about the Lord Jesus. And he, as he began to read it, it was like God spoke into his heart as once again, 
the Lord spoke to him and says, Hudson, you're not following me. You put other things first. You don't care about me anymore. But I care about you. And I want you to open your heart again to me. And as Hudson read this leaflet, he began to realize he had been putting other things before God. And he asked the Lord Jesus once again to forgive him and to fill him with his Holy Spirit. And as he did that, once again, all that sadness left him. And he suddenly realized that God had a purpose for him, just like he has a purpose for you and every one of us. And suddenly he began to experience joy. Well, he, was, he thought, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, as God's joy and God's Holy Spirit filled his life. And just then, as he went out, there was his mother and sister coming back. And, oh, mom, he says, Amelia, I've got something to tell you. And he says, we know, Hudson. What? You know what? We know that you're following Jesus again. Who told you? How did you know? Well, we can see it in you now, Hudson. But as we were praying for you, the Lord spoke into our hearts and told us and showed us that you'd accepted Jesus into your life again. Oh, yes, mom. And it's so good. I'm so grateful. And what he and his sister Amelia did, they went out and they started giving out what we call these tracks and began to tell people about Jesus. And then one day, as Hudson was praying, and he was saying, Lord, what do you want me to do for you? And he remembered how when he was five, he had said to the Lord Jesus, yes, Lord, I will go to China. And that's what he said. And that's what he decided to do. And we'll hear more about this incredible story of Hudson Taylor. Uh, in future weeks and it is one of the, he is one of the greatest missionaries his work still remains fantastic story exciting story and it is exciting following Jesus it really is but what I wanted to share with you is this I've got here this is uh you can just see it it's it, it is a it, this is a tract this is just a leaflet about the Lord Jesus and you know it's amazing some of us may feel a bit scared about giving, uh, telling people about Jesus. But, you know, we can all give like one of these. We call it a gospel tract. This is a father's love letter, which uh, you can read online. It's a great leaflet about Jesus's love. And it's so easy. And I know sometimes I've given this leaflet out to people and I've seen them as they've watched it. And they're thinking and I've seen tears come into their eyes. And I've seen them just being so grateful. I mean, some people will just tear it up and think, oh, nothing miles about it. But, you know, it's an opportunity for someone to hear about Jesus. And it's something that you can do. I was at a school meeting uh, the other day and I was telling a story about a trip I did when I was in Russia. And I miss being in Russia. And of course, as we know, this it's a very sad war that's going on in the Ukraine and it's very difficult to go out to Russia nowadays but one day I was in Russia and I was on this train and we were a group of the team we were all together but it was so hot there was no air conditioning in the in the in the, in the train and it was just so incredibly hot and we were having to go into the corridor and there was a tap there with water on me putting the water on our head it was just so it was very very hot and very uncomfortable and eventually the, the train stopped in a station and there was four of us in, in the carriage we were in. It was one of these carriages with, uh, you know, different compartments with a corridor alongside. And there was four of us. There was three of us who were on the team. And there was another man. Uh, it was a Russian man who was actually in the uh, carriage with us as well. Well, we all stood onto the uh, platform. And I noticed that this man had gone off. He was obviously new people. Well, just as the train were getting to come back on, this, we all were getting on the train. And this man had been somewhere and he came back just to get back on the train with us. And as he did so, he handed me an ice cream. 
oh, an ice cream in about 100 degree temperature. It was wonderful. It was the best ice cream I'd ever tasted. It was, and, and it was like I wanted to put bits of it on my face, you know, to cool me down. Oh, it was just so good. What a, oh, it, and I, do you know, I was so grateful to that man. So grateful. And then I thought, what can I do for him? He's done this wonderful thing for me. What can I do for him? And then I thought, all I can do is find him a tract about Jesus. Because I thought the best thing I can ever do for this person is to tell him about Jesus. So he could be saved. So he could go to heaven. Well, and I thought, I've got one. So I searched. You know, you lift up the compartment where we put our bags and I searched through my bags and I found a trap similar to this. And so I just handed him it and I thought, OK, I'll just glance at it, maybe not bother. Well, I saw him reading it and I felt it in my heart. I thought, this man is really interested. So I asked one of the Russian girls who could speak English, uh, Susie, I remember saying, Susie, uh, can you just translate for me? Yes. And so I spoke to the person, asked his name, my name, and just started talking to him. And then I says, are you understanding what you're reading? Well, yes. And so we began to explain to him from the leaflet how Jesus loved him, how Jesus had died on the cross. And though he was built, uh, brought up as what we would call an Orthodox Christian, in fact, he knew some of these things from the Bible, because the Russian people are taught in the church about Jesus, about who he is, but often they're not asked, encouraged to ask him into their lives. In some churches, the same here. We can hear about Jesus, but we need to know him for ourselves. And so we said to him, would you like to accept Jesus as your savior? And he says, yes, I would. And it was just so wonderful as we prayed with this man and he opened his heart to Jesus and he asked Jesus into his life. It was tremendous. We were all so thrilled. And then the train stopped. And then just after it accepted Jesus, he was away. Now, we don't know. Never saw that man again. Our hope was to see him in heaven. And it was because I was grateful. I was grateful for what it did. And I appreciated that person. You know, God loves everybody. He wants everybody to hear about him. And you can give a person a little tract or something like that. So I hope you will. Let's just go now and we're going to, oops, uh, and to uh, the victory side. And let's just do that and we can go back into our screen. And to go and here, that's we'll hear about more of that story next week. And as we often do each week, we just have a quick peek into the story from yesterday or from the program that goes up on a Saturday about the victory side. And here we have, I hope here it is. And there, I'm going to start with, this is Sarah Bear is the caller and Victory Bear. And they're just going to sing a chorus that you and I will probably know very well, which is read your Bible, pray every day. And then Pastor Pauline will just do a memory verse. Let's just do that now. Our team song for this year is read your Bible. Pray every day, pray every day, read your Bible. Shrink, 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 shrink
because it's been cold but had to wake him up to come to victory side today and you remember we're starting a whole new set of verses this week we've done a to z and now we're going to start on a new set and this is i'm going to use lowercase <clears throat> not capital letters letter a and listen carefully a ask and you will receive that your joy will be full can you say that? Ask, Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. And that's A in our second set of letters. And, well, Victory Bear, that's it. You're going to have to come and sing again because I've only got one today. There's no more to practice. So come along, boys and girls, Teddies. Somebody said good afternoon, Bears. That's Donna Land. Okay, we'll hand back. We'll go back to that a little bit later. Um, but I want to come now to what I think is one of my favorite stories. And it's certainly a, a very interesting story relating to, well, what is happening today? Because many people are pretending to be something that they are not. And this is when we come, as I say, to the story of Mickey, who pretended to be what did you pretend to be mickey come on a lion i did i, I pretended to be a lion Roar! okay so let's have a look this story of mickey in a lion skin okay here we go there we go this is the story mickey or monkey in a lion skin. And what happened was this. There was the giraffe and there was a hippopotamus. Now, I sometimes call the giraffe Gertie and Hugo. Gertie the giraffe and Hugo the hippopotamus. And Hugo said, Gertie, look at that. That's a lion swinging in a tree. I've never seen that before. Gertie said, no, you go. That's not a lion. That's Mickey. Mickey? Yes, it's Mickey pretending to be a lion. And so Gertie went across or shouted up to Mickey. Mickey, what are you doing pretending to be a lion? Mickey. Roar! Roar! I am not a monkey now. I'm a lion. See? Roar! <laughs> well, Gertie came and said, Look, Mickey, just because you say you're a lion doesn't make you a lion. It doesn't? I am! I am! See, I've even put a lion skin on. Well, just because you dress like a lion doesn't make you a lion. But, but yes, I mean, the other animals think so. I mean, I, I, I chased a pig the other day and I went, roar! And he ran away. And, and, and some of the other animals too. <laughs> yes, said Gertie. But then you're going to meet somebody who sees that you're just pretending and you're not really a lion. You were born a monkey and you will always be a monkey. That's the way you're made. Now, you might not happy to be a monkey, but you are a monkey. No matter what you may say, because that's who you are. Oh, oh don't tell me these things because 
look, Mickey, he jumped to the floor and he began to try and walk like a lion. And then he tried to eat like a lion. And of course, Skirty and Hugo looked on very sympathetically because they could see he had fooled himself. He had fooled himself and was trying to fool others to think he was something he was not. Oh dear. Do you think people do that today? Do you think people do that today? Do you think people pretend to be something that they're not trying to fool other people? Oh, well, perhaps I better not say anything else about that because it might very well be happening as we speak. Sometimes people try and trick people into thinking there's something they're not. And so Gertie says to Hugo, eh, we're just going to have to let him learn the hard way. Oh, what, what do you mean, said Hugo? Well, he might, I think. And Gertie sniffed the air. I think he is a, um, oh, I think there's a leopard coming. Mickey, Mickey, you need to stop being so silly and you need to run away quick because there is a leopard. Mickey went, no, well, I'm a lion, I'm not scared. And so Gertie and Hugo, as they saw Mickey trying to do his antics in trying to pretend to be something he wasn't, come on, said Gertie, we'd better go. And so they went and Gertie says, look out, look out, Mickey, look out, be careful. I'm fine, said Mickey with a, a roar in his voice. Quick, come on, Hugo. And then suddenly behind Mickey, there was this voice. Aha! Monkey in a lion skin. Just what I need for my dinner today. Put it in brown. Yes. Roar! But the leopard goes, wow. <laughs> he went the leopard. And then he gave one of his, whoop, one of, I'm jumping ahead here. He gave one of his uh, roars. And he went, Rawr! And he goes, Keep me, Mickey. Yes, I did. I was terrified. I was really, really scared. So Mickey began to run away. But of course, as you can see here, uh, it's very hard to run faster than a leopard who is very quick. Yes, he was very quick. And my lion skin began to fall off, which uh, it wasn't any good anyway. And so Mickey ran and he managed to climb up a tree. But leopards can climb up trees. And there, there was the leopard. But Mickey, because he was very light, had got to the end of the branch. And the leopard says, ha, 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 I can wait. I can wait for my dinner, said the leopard. And poor Mickey, he wished he had never been so foolish. He wished, he wished that other people had never tried to persuade him to pretend to be a lion when he wasn't a lion. He thought, I wish I could have been happy just being a monkey, which is the way I am made. And there he was. Well, is this going to be the end of Mickey? Well, no, because I'm here. <laughs> yes, I know, Mickey. Fortunately, Mickey had some very good friends. And it's always good to have friends who can help us. And Mickey, there he was. What am I going to, what's going to happen? Am I just going to be a monkey stew? Oh, dear, that leopard is waiting for me. And he sat there for quite a while. And then the leopard... Yes, I'm just going to close my eyes, but as soon as you move, that will be goodbye, Mickey. Oh dear. But then, as Mickey was there wondering and thinking, oh dear, oh dear, suddenly heard a whistle. Can you whistle? I can't whistle very well. 
He went, as he looked, it was a giraffe. And he saw the giraffe and you go in the distance. And they were watching from a safe distance. And Gertie was watching how the leopard was closing its eyes. And then he hit it. And Mickey watched as the giraffe began to paw the ground with its hooves. And then suddenly Mickey realized what was going to happen and says, yes. So from a long distance, the giraffe began to run and the giraffes can run very, very fast. And before the leopard knew what was happening, the giraffe ran past and Mickey jumped onto the lion's neck and they were able to escape. Whoa, that was amazing. Yes, oh, I'm so glad to have good friends. Oh, I was so happy. Yes, and he was so happy as uh, he was able to escape and to tell us this story. And now, I don't pretend to be something I'm not anymore. It's good to be who you are, who God made us. That's right. Remember, Jesus will never leave you. Okay, thanks, Mickey. Well, I thought we'd just do that story today because in what is happening in many places, well, you may know lots of people are pretending to be something that they are not. But we are who we are. God loves us as we are. And it's good to be able to accept that and to give our hearts to the Lord Jesus. Because if we're unhappy inside, it may be because people have been calling us names. It may be because people don't like us. It may be because we have problems with many things. But the Bible tells us to bring our cares and our problems to Jesus and he will help us because he cares for us and he has a special plan for our lives. Well, we've got one other exciting story to do before we finish. But before we do that, let's just go and have one more song. And let's do this song here, what we've got today, which is um, joy. Because that's what the Lord Jesus wants us to have, joy. This is a, we call this a golden oldie song we used to sing. And it goes, I've got the, I've got the Let's do the right key. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Yeah, down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. And then we've got this this person. Let's go back. I've got I've got Fred here, and the Fred's going to help us. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Wow. Down in my heart, down in my heart, I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus, down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. You do it, Fred. I've got the peace of passes understanding down in my heart, where? Down in my heart, where? Down in my heart, I've got the peace of passes understanding down in my heart, where? Down in my heart to stay. Here's another verse. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer right down in the depths of my heart. Down in the depths of my heart. Down in the depths of my heart. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer right down in the depths of my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy. And I'm so happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart, and I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I know the devil doesn't like it, but it's down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I know the devil doesn't like it, but it's down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. I'll do this one again. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. 
I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Isn't it amazing? It's about people help in one of the other stories from Daniel. So we're going to look at that now. Let's bring it up. Here we go. And it's about a dream. It's amazing how God can speak to us in so many ways. With some people, God even speaks through dreams. We, we know that with Joseph. And it also happened in this story we're going to look at now. And Let's go to it. And here we have the story of Daniel. Now, I'll just give you a bit of a background to this story. There was a Babylonians or a big, very strong, powerful Babylonian empire which had been developed. Now, if you were with us last week, we were doing the story. Well, how Babel or began from the Tower of Babel and it all goes right the way through to the present day history in some ways from the Bible because Babylon is symbolic of powers or the powers of the enemy to some degree. So let's hear the story and the background is that when the Babylonian army conquered Jerusalem they took captives and brought them back to Babylon. One of those chosen to serve King Nebuchadnezzar was a young man called Daniel. And I've just put here, just to remind us, that Daniel, his name means God is my judge. And they tried to change his name to be something he wasn't. Yes, that's right. To Belteshazzar, that is Bel's prince. And there was his friends who were called Hananiah. That is, his name was Jehovah had favored. But they, tried, they changed his name to Shadrach from Rak in Babylonian, the king, that is the son. You see, it was like the enemies want to change us into what they want us to be rather than what God wants us to be. And then the other man was a man called Michel. In fact, it's the name of Mike, really, Michael or Mickey, if you like. And the name is that, which is my name, of course, that is who is what God is or who is comparable to God or who is like God. That's it, Mike, Michelle. And of course, they tried to, well, they changed his name to Meshach. So we often know them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And his name meant, as you can see here, the earth or Venus, the goddess of love and mirth. Again, she's trying to change people into what the world wants us to be rather than what God wants us to be. And then finally, uh, the other man was, uh, which is Abednego, his real name was Azaz Azariah, that is whom Jehovah helps. And he tried to, Abednego means that is the servant of the shining fire. And so they were all wanted to serve their gods, which was Bel. Anyway, let's just move on to the story. One night, King Nebuchadnezzar had such disturbing dreams that he couldn't sleep. So he called his, his magicians, his enchanters, sorcerers and astrologers, and he demanded that they tell him what he had dreamed. He said, what? Uh, 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 tell us the dream and we'll tell you what it means. Well, the king realized what they were like. And so he said, no, replied Demekinezer, you must tell me what I dreamt and then tell me the meaning. Both the, the astrologers begged, oh, please, please, your majesty, tell us the dream and we will tell you what it means. What's it mean? Do we make up a story? Well, Nebuchadnezzar demanded. You must tell me the dream and then I will know you can interpret it. If you don't tell me my dream, I will execute you. Or even to put it in the eye. So. But, 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 but they said, no one except the gods can tell you a dream. The, the astrologers protested. The king now became very angry and furious. And he ordered that all the wise men of Babylon to be executed. Well, Daniel, because of his wisdom and his strength, had already been chosen as wise men. So he was included in this command from the king. And so 
When Daniel heard about this command, he asked Arioch, who was the commander of the king's guard, what had happened. Knowing his life was at risk, Daniel went to see the king to request more time to discover what the king had dreamt and its meaning. And the king, because obviously he favored Daniel, but now the law had been made and Daniel would be also one of those who were killed, he allowed him some time, he said. Well, Daniel went home and told his friends, Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, what had happened. He urged them to pray to God to reveal the secret so they would not be executed. That night, the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision, and he began to praise the Lord. God gave the understanding of the dream. And friends, you know, it's, it's good that when this, the Bible tells us, when we read the Bible, when we pray, God can give us, we call it a spirit of understanding, revelation that we can understand as we ask him. That's what the memory verse was today. Ask and receive that your joy may be full as we ask, Lord, help us understand. So Daniel understood the meaning of the dream. So he went to the king. Well, first of all, he went to the commander who was pleased when uh, Daniel told him he got the meaning. And so he said, Daniel said, don't kill the wise man. Take me to the king and I will tell him the meaning of his dream. And then Daniel told the king, there are no wise men who can reveal the king's secret. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. Now I will tell you your dream and the vision you saw. And so he began to tell him. He says, look, in your vision, you saw a frightening, huge, shining statue of a man. The head of the statue was made of fine gold. Its chest and its arms were silver, its belly and its thighs were bronze, its legs were iron and its feet were a combination of iron and bait clay. As you watched, a rock was cut from a mountain, but not by human hands. It struck the feet of iron and clay, smashing them to bits. The whole statue was crushed into small pieces of iron and clay, bronze, silver and gold. Then the wind blew them away without a trace, like chaff on a threshing floor. But the rock that knocked the statue down became a great mountain that covered the whole earth. Well, everyone was waiting. What was Daniel going to say now? Then Daniel then went on to tell the dream. Your majesty, you are the head of gold. God has given you sovereignty, power, strength, and honor. He has made you the ruler over all the inhabited earth. Silver represents an inferior kingdom that will come after you. The bronze is the kingdom after that one. Following that kingdom, there will be a fourth one as strong as iron. That kingdom will smash and crush all the previous empires. Again, can you imagine people listening to this? What's Daniel saying? What does it mean? And he's beginning to tell them the secret that comes right through to our present day. And he told them, well, let me show you first. This is a picture of this uh, image. There it is. And I'll just show you a little bit more as we go on. You can come back to that later if you want to. And Daniel said to the king, you are the head of gold. You are the foremost of all these kingdoms. This was the head of gold, the strongest, the most powerful, the richest, the head, the brains, if you like, behind the whole image. Because he was the head. And then we began to understand that the head of gold, it represented King Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. Babylon, and it gives you the dates here. You can just see on the screen the dates when King Nebuchadnezzar and the kings of Babylon ruled. After that, there was the other kingdom of Persia, which took over when Cyrus came and the other kings. And then after that, very short really was, well, it was Greece, which started with Alexander the Great. And then into Rome, which has been the dominant kingdom 
uh, for many, many years in the times of the Lord Jesus. And this kingdom behind the scenes has been ruling in a lot of ways. But then that kingdom is divided into iron and clay. And there we have it, which represents the kingdoms of the world to this present day. So this is, so Daniel continued and he said, and he came to the feet and the toes, you saw were a combination of iron and baked clay. This kingdom will be divided, divided like iron mixed with clay. It will have some of the strength of iron, but other parts will be as weak as clay. The rock that was not cut by human hands, that crushed to the statue of iron, bronze, clay, silver, and gold, is the kingdom that God of heaven will set up. It will crush all other kingdoms and will never be destroyed or conquered. So when King Nebuchadnezzar heard that and he knew what he was saying was true because he had not told anybody. In fact, he'd almost forgotten it himself. But he recognized what Daniel was saying was true. And he threw himself down before Daniel and saying, truly, your God is the greatest of gods, the Lord over kings, a revealer of mysteries. For you have been able to reveal this secret, the king declared. Daniel then was promoted to be ruler of the whole province of Babylon, as well as chief over all the wise men. And at Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Again, he was called to be in charge of all the affairs of the province of Babylon. But just before we finish, let's just have a quick look. There's, there were four metals, gold, which is the most precious, silver, bronze, iron. But then of all these wealth, as it were, of the nations, we see Christ represented by a stone. And this is, as we say, these four great kingdoms. And then, this stone or this rock, which represents God's kingdom, hits the feet and the feet of iron and clay, which represents, as you can see here, the divided nations, which represents the kingdoms of the world at this present time. And so as this happens, there becomes an expectation that soon and very soon, the Lord Jesus is going to come back again. And that's an exciting thing to look forward to. Here's another picture of the image and the stone coming and hitting the nations that represent the days in which we are living. Iron and clay, not really one strong kingdom, but kingdoms divided. And this is, of course, it says all the other kingdoms are are, are, are destroyed essentially and all of what they have been ruling over the whole world for hundreds of years or thousands of years really and suddenly they are all dissolved into nothing and the wind blows the chaff of the dust away never to be remembered and then we read that this stone represents the coming of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, coming in his power, coming in his glory. And as we've read, Daniel says, join the reigns of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered. It will crush all these kingdoms into nothingness and it will stand forever. And this is what Jesus says. When we see all these things begin to happen, he says, look up because I am coming soon. No man knows the day or the hour. But we know when these things happen, the Bible talks about when Israel is reborn as a nation. That's a great sign, which was just incredible. And some of the other things when Jesus says, like it was in the days of Noah, when there was such violence, there were such terrible things happening. He says, so shall it be in the day of the Son of Man. And Jesus himself says this at the end of that passage in Matthew. He says, be ready or watch, but you don't know the day nor the hour 
in which the Son of Man, meaning I am coming back, Jesus says, we don't know the day and hour, but the Bible says we can know the times and the seasons. That's why the Bible tells us to be ready, because Jesus is coming soon. Now, he's coming for those who love him. Those who've been willing to stand for Jesus. Those who've been willing to be true Christians. And sometimes, as we do our program, usually I finish with a verse like this. And this is the verse where Jesus says, and he's speaking more or less to Christians. And though it applies for everybody. Jesus says, listen or behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. That's from the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible. And if you notice on this door, it's so interesting. It's a famous picture of an image by a man called Holman Hunt. It doesn't have a handle on the outside. You see, the handle's on the inside. The Lord Jesus asks you and I, he says, will you open the door of your life to me? Will you keep your promise that you made to me maybe years ago? Are you willing to do what I want? And I want everybody to hear about me. Are you willing to give out a tract? Are you willing to do something for me in my name that people can know that I'm alive? And so as we just conclude today, the presence of the Lord Jesus is here. Can you in your will and in your heart, you know, when the Lord Jesus, just prior to his death, he knew the awful things were going to happen to him. But he prayed this prayer. He says, Lord, Father, not my will, but your will will be done. He knew as he came as a man to be like you and I. He knew the things he was going to suffer. But he said, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. And can you say that today? Lord Jesus, I'm choosing your will, not what I want to do. I want to do what you want me to do. And I'm willing to do that because Jesus has promised he would never leave us. He's promised he will help us. He's promised he will give us the strength to do what he asks us to do. He gives us not a spirit of fear. But the spirit, the Holy Spirit of love and of power and of an understanding mind. So as we conclude, just in your heart can say to Jesus, Lord Jesus, today I open my heart to you. I open the door of my life to you. Please come in, Lord Jesus. Please forgive me. Please help me to keep my promise to you. Just like Hudson Taylor did those many years ago. Lord, to do what you want me to do. Please come in. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And Lord Jesus, help me to tell others about you. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you. I believe you are the son of God. And one day you will come and take me to heaven. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for looking in. And sorry about that. And uh, hopefully see you next week. God bless you. And hopefully we'll have the midnight hour on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Okay. Cheerio. Bye-bye.